Welcome back. In Somalia, a German nurse working for the International Committee of the Red Cross has been kidnapped in the capital, Mogadishu. In a statement, the ICRC says she, has, she, has, she was seized by armed men from inside the ICRC compound at around 8 p.m. local time on Wednesday. The Red Cross adds that it is deeply concerned about the safety of the nurse who was working every day to save lives and improve the health of some of Somalia's most vulnerable people. There is no public indication of who the kidnappers are, but the organization says it is in touch with various authorities to secure her release. Earlier this week, a World Health Organization employee was shot dead by unknown men in Mogadishu. A court in South Africa has sentenced a man to 32 years in prison for murdering his ex-girlfriend by stabbing her and then trying to conceal his crime by burning her body. 28-year-old Sandile Mansoi was arrested after the charred remains of 23-year-old Karabo Mukoina was found in a shallow grave near a suburb of the main city Johannesburg in April 2017. Ms. Mukoina's murder sparked outrage in South Africa where femicides are around five times higher than the global average. It also led to online accounts of physical and sexual abuse by men using, using the hashtag men are trash. Let's get more on the story from a South African journalist, Bazukile Diko. Thanks for joining us on Network Africa. Bazukile, how are South Africans reacting to the guilty verdict handed down to Sandile Matsoi over the murder of Karabo Mukwena? I'd say a lot of people are somewhat satisfied with the fact that justice has been meted out in this case. Uh, what has become quite a popular or well-known um, or prominent case in terms of femicide in South Africa. Some are saying the sentence um, is, is, is quite lengthy. It, it, does, it does suit the seriousness of the crime, while others find it lacking somewhat. What the judge did hand down in his sentence today was 30 years uh, for murder, four years for defeating the ends of justice, and five years for assault. And with the defeating the ends of justice, um, part of the case is that it is known that Sandy Lemansui, in fact, was concealing uh, the death of Karabo Mukwena, took her body to an open field, what we call a south here in South Africa, in the suburb of Lisbeth in Johannesburg, and burnt and proceeded to burn her body. Um, that is known. What is not known is what possibly happened in that flat where he claimed he found Karabo dead, having committed Something that in, uh, the judge found yesterday while reading his judgment, um, he found ludicrous and um, hard to believe. So at this point, South Africans are certainly encouraged to see action and put justice. This trial took a year, which is something quite incredible here. Africa reportedly has one of the world's highest rates of sexual violence and murder of women. What are the authorities doing to tackle this menace? African journalist Bazukile Diko, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. In West Africa, artists from all over the world have arrived in Dakar for the 13th edition of Dakar, a massive exhibition of African art which takes over the Senegalese capital. Over the next four weeks, there will be displays across the city, concerts and debates around the role of art. For French-based Senegalese artist and Leon Badara Sa, immigration, cultural diversity and identity 
are at the heart of his painting. Take a look. Painting outside his house while written residents that pass by all day on the main road. Senegalese artist Elion Badara Sar explains that his paintings with bold primary colors of blue, red, and yellow represent cultures, identities, and personal stories. Their position on the canvas is how they interact in the world. I told myself I will try to work on this painting, to question the painting, and try to work with the maximum of materials on there, and the fact that the paints intermingle whilst others repel each other is a bit like that's what's going on in this world. This guy doesn't like this guy, and this guy accepts the other guy, and it's the same thing that's going on here with the painting. After studying at the Fine Arts School in Dakar, he traveled to Brest in France to do his master's at the École Européenne des Beaux-Arts. He says that at first, when he arrived in France, he began collecting stories from other travelers and migrants. But in the end, he chose to concentrate on his own story in his paintings. And at the same time, I told myself it would be more justifiable to work on my own journey. And I felt legitimate working on that subject since I myself had migrated. And I set off with my stories and all the interviews that I did with people who'd left. Then I put that aside and I thought it's more legitimate to work on myself. Born in 1983, Saw was a shepherd in Diofour, 140 kilometers south of Dakar. Now an adult, Saar is a painter and a sculptor. <laughs> Whilst tending to his flock, Saar says he would spend his hours of solitude questioning everything. It was that search for answers that led him to art. Forcément, une certaine influence de ma culture. The Dakar Benel, for me, is the mirror of Africa. It's a whole dream for all artists, be they African artists or not. All of the world's artists dream of working for the Dakar Benel, so being named and being cited amongst those who are exposing for the inn, it's a real pride. This year's theme is the Red R for what is known as the Inn Exhibition. The off will be made up of 300 private installations and showcasing works of about 75 artists. Held every two years, DAC Art gives African and diasporan artists an opportunity to engage with each other and audiences from around the world. In East Africa, Madagascar's defense minister and the heads of the security forces have called on the government and the opposition to resolve the, pol the political crisis that has gripped the island nation as soon as possible. Opposition lawmakers and their supporters have been occupying a square in the capital, Antananarivo, for the past fortnight. Two people were killed on the first day of the protest. They are calling for the president to resign, accusing him of manipulating the electoral law to his advantage. The new electoral law would prevent former president Mark Ravalumanana from running in the elections due later this year. And that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Topwe Fagbimi.